If you are currently leveling up your Django and Postgres skills with this tutorial, you might like to know that this tutorial is part of a whole playlist where you will learn how to, with Django and Postgres, create database level constraints and triggers. If you like this playlist and you would like to learn more about Django ORM, then do check out our Django ORM Mastery course on Udemy. Links to the playlist and course can be found in the video description. Now that we have set up our database, we're now ready to connect to it from a Django project. Now, in order for us to connect our Django application to our Postgres database, we're going to need a database adapter or a database driver. Now, there are a few different versions. We're going to be utilizing PSYCOPG, which is the most popular, as it suggests here, database driver. So let's go ahead and take that and let's install making the assumption that you have your project available. So I'm just going to go ahead and pip install and then pip freeze that to update the requirements. Notice I'm not in the right place for that. So uh, I need to CD back into my project. Make sure that I'm where the requirements text is. Let's run that again. So pip, apologies, pip freeze. Let's save that and update the requirements text. So that is the driver now installed. So all we need to do, the second step, is to now define in our Django project. So let's go to our Django project, the core now, settings. We just need to specify the fact we're no longer going to be utilizing the SQLite database. We want to now swap this with the Postgres database. So we now need to specify the fact we're utilizing the Postgres database. So from the Django DB backends, we specify Postgres SQL. So Django is set up ready to work with Postgres SQL. So we bring all those tools in so that we can interact and communicate with our database. Right, so the name here is referring to the database name, which we know is called inventory. That's the database that we've set up in our Docker Compose, no, not our Docker Compose file file in the uh, scripts. So let's uh, bring this down. Postgres and our script. That's the name of the database that we've set up in our Postgres database inventory. So that just leaves us to now specify the user, which is Postgres password. Postgres, remember that's what we've set up so far in Docker Compose. And we can also then specify the host and the port. So the default port for Postgres SQL 5432 and the host, the loop, local loopback address. Remember everything is running on our local machine at the moment. So we specify the loopback address 127.0.0.1. Right, so I already have everything running in the background, but if you don't, you'll need to make sure that you bring all the services up utilizing the docker compose up command. Remember the D flag detached to run in the background. If you need to, just double check that everything is set up correctly in your containers and the database is running successfully. Looks like everything is good to go. And now we can just test this out. So if I ls to make sure I'm in the right directory, so let's cd into my Django project. Let's now go ahead and manage up pi. Let's uh, run the migrate command. And you can see that we have migrated successfully, identifying or indicating, sorry, the fact that potentially we have connected to our Postgres database. We can, of course, test this out. If you go into the your add miner again, 127001, colon 8080, let me just run a refresh. And actually, let's go back to the root. I oh, didn't mean to do that, so just need to log back in again. I can specify the database. Notice I don't. Uh, so the infantry database, and you can now see we've migrated all the management database tables over to our new Postgres database. Now, one of the main reasons why I selected AdMiner is because it makes it very easy for us to reset everything, for us to practice and try other things. So if you select inventory DB from the list at the top, that takes you back to the list of databases. So if I select and drop the inventory, and then I can select create database and recreate, that just resets everything for us. So as simple as that, we've now created our connection to the Postgres database. We've tested it by running migrate and we have then gone ahead and just reset our database again by deleting it and then recreating it manually.
Now it's well recommended to actually spend a little bit of time now recreating your database, going through that process a few times, familiarizing yourself with the interface, both with AdMiner, if you haven't already, the Docker desktop, because the more familiar you are with these basics, once we get deeper into the project, it's going to make it easier for you to follow along. 